This is Caleb Lancaster coming to you with another installment of The Big Five. We're here with Pastor Ayers, and we've got a very important topic today to talk about, and uh, that's the topic of bitterness. Uh, this is something that affects pretty much everybody. Uh, why do you think this is such an important topic for us to discuss, Pastor? Because the consequences of not dealing with bitter bitterness can be catastrophic, not only to your relationships with your family, to your health, and it can pretty much destroy every aspect of your life. And for the Christian, it can pretty much, well, it can and it will um, blunt your testimony in, in, the, uh, in the world around us. So what do we do uh, if we're seeking to overcome bitterness in our lives? Well, I think the first thing we need to do is go to the Lord and seek forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness for that individual that hurt you. And I'm going to specifically, for the rest of this topic, we're going to deal primarily with bitterness over issue over people that have hurt us. Um, the book of Matthew chapter 6 clearly gives some uh, guidance along that area and that we are to uh, seek forgiveness, ask forgiveness on an infinite number of times. Good, and I believe the book of Colossians tells us that we are to forgive based on the forgiveness that Jesus Christ has given us. Amen. And I think that's wonderful. Um, second of all, I think we put down here, um, stop stalking him. Now, and I'm real curious to know what that's all about. Well, before you laugh or you say that's not me, yes, you are stalking them. Because you're doing a couple of things if you have not forgiven them and not moved on. is Number one is you're probably gossiping. You're talking about the issue. You're dredging it up again and again and again. And Ephesians tells us to let no corrupt communication proceed out of our mouth. So if we're going to get this issue of bitterness settled, yes, we need to seek forgiveness, but we've got to stop stalking them. We've got to stop talking about them. And frankly, you turn everybody off, and everybody knows that when you show up in the room, they know exactly what you're going to bring up. Wow, that's so important. Obviously, if we can keep that wound fresh, then that's really going to help maintain that bitterness, and that's important for us to stop uh, bringing that up over and over again. Which I think brings us right into our next point, which is stop re uh, rehearsing the hurt and what you want to do or maybe what you should have or could have done during that situation. Let's all be real here. Every one of us has had somebody that's hurt us and we rehearse it over and over and over in our minds. Now, two ways we rehearse it. Number one is what happened to us, and that obviously keeps the wound fresh. But number two is we rehearse in our minds what I'm going to do to take care of this. And we need to let it go. And we find, again, that in the book of Ephesians, as Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, and he was trying to help them with matters like this, he says, Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put out, away from you with all malice. In other words, it's time to move on and stop rehearsing the matter. Good. You know, I know I've often thought about um, the one-liners or the responses maybe that I could have made uh, that would have... Um, hurt them instead of me being hurt so much. Yeah. Why didn't I say this? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I? Oh, I wish I'd have thought of that. And that does not help the matter. That needs to be put away. Absolutely. And I think in addition to that, um, we've put down here, focus on improving yourself. Tell us about how that helps us. In other words, what can I as a Christian do to make my life better? You know, how can I improve? Is there anybody I can serve? What can I do as far as my testimony for my wife, my family, my children? Focus on not self-improvement, but biblical improvement in your life, you know? Give all diligence and add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge, as it says in 2 Peter. You know, focus on who you are and get your mind off of what they have done. Good, and I think the fifth one is realize the consequences of not moving on. I think we touched just a hair on those at the beginning, but what are those consequences? You know, how many people that have destroyed lives, including themselves, over bitterness would have done things differently had they realized the consequences of holding on to this? And I can think of so many examples. A man in New Jersey that never let things go, destroyed his family, his wife, his home, and his job, frankly, because he would not let this go. Think about the consequences of not, uh, of holding on to bitterness. Think about what that would cost you in, um, in relationships, in money, and in time, and ultimately your testimony. I think a lot of people have finally forgiven someone over something that they were bitter about, and after finally doing that, thinking, 
boy, imagine all that I've lost by holding on to that bitterness so long. And I think that's so important for us. So there's your big five for uh, today. We talk about overcoming bitterness. Number one, seek to forgive the person who you're bitter against. Number two, stop stalking them. Number three, stop rehearsing the hurt. Number four, focus on improving yourself. And number five, realize the consequences of not moving on. I hope you'll find something in all of this that helps you. And we'll come back to you again next week with another big five.